Hello everyone and welcome to Shading Forms with Mrs. Castillo where today we will be doing the sphere. Remember we are using the blending technique so you should not be uh, moving your pencil back and forth in straight lines but using the circular motion. Also remember that you should never ever smudge with your fingers to try and blend. We are going to be getting our gradient using our pencil pressure alone for this video. Whenever you draw a circle uh, you want to keep your wrist so that you can move it back and forth and turn your paper. That's the key to doing a good circle. And I apologize, I was looking at the screen for a second there instead of the paper. Um, but again, turn that paper so that your wrist is always comfortable. And that's how you can get a really nice looking circle. We'll do it in sections and go back and make any adjustments that you may need to. Look parts of the shading of the sphere. First you have your highlight, and that's where the light is hitting most directly, so it's reflecting the light, um, the brightest value. Then you have your mid-tones mid as you start to get a little bit darker in your shading and a little bit darker values. And then you have your core shadow. So again, this is the darkest part, the part that is furthest away from the light, uh, or usually opposite of the light. And you have your reflected highlight, so the light bouncing off of the floor, walls, etc. And your cast shadow. Started on our sphere. First, of course, you have to consider where is your light source coming from. So pick a position. Mine's going to be the top left for my light source, kind of like in the example. And we're going to know that we have our um, shadow that starts a little bit kind of against where the left edge of the sphere is. It curves outward and then goes again opposite of the light source. So lights shining from top left, our cast shadow goes bottom right. Now then we know that our highlight, our brightest area, our lightest value is going to be that top left area. So I want to make sure I leave that spot unshaded for now. I'm just going to give myself kind of a guide where I want to leave it unshaded. Then I know I have my midtones about right here and then my core shadow right here. So I'm going to start with my core shadow, that's the darkest shading. And then as I move um, towards my highlight, I'm going to put, apply less pressure to my pencil and get a medium kind of shade, a medium value, uh, basically get lighter and create that gradient as I get closer to the um, highlight. Keep in mind that this reflected highlight should not be as bright as the actual highlight. Uh, so you can go in here and shade it. Just remember to leave it slightly lighter. In our cast shadow, again, right where the object is sitting on the surface of the table, that's where it's going to be the darkest shading. And then we'll go from darker values to a little bit lighter values as we get further away from the object. 